Thank you for taking time out of your schedule today. This is Sunday, December 17, 2023. We're getting closer to the reason for the season. And the question is today, do you have a need to be blessed this Christmas season? How would it change your life if you did receive the blessing that was indeed a blessing to you? Many of us know one thing. It's no accident that we listen to this podcast today. This church is proactive to receive and give blessings freely. Blessings that are given to us in the Holy Bible. Blessings that are available to all who search for ultimate truth as we do. And you know when we're blessed, we're a blessing to others. When you're blessed, you're a blessing to others. To lift up one person is to lift up everyone. We're all a piece of the puzzle, the great dynamic of life. Ultimate truths that can be discovered in all of the nearly 4,000 religions is what we're looking for. We're looking for the ultimate truth. We're looking for the cause that produces the effect that releases the treasure trove of blessings to us. That's what we're all about. We do a lot of research. I'm Reverend Dr. Sherwood Howland, a licensed ordained minister through the International Metaphysical Ministry Systems. I'm licensed to perform all functions of the church. Know that if you experience a spiritual benefit or outcome of any kind, it is God's presence within you that you have activated to do the work for you. It's all an inner work. It has nothing to do with anyone else besides you. What is your belief system? Does it allow your prayers to be answered? That is what we ask the question, the big question, that metaphysics is all about. Metaphysics is a philosophy, and all of us have a philosophy. No matter what church we go to, we don't always agree with everyone else there. We agree for the most part, but maybe not always. But we like to go there because for the most part, they have a belief system that's similar to ours. So it's no secret that God knows what you've been praying, meditating, and contemplating on this week. And it's no secret that God knows your heart. God knows how important it is to you, to each of us. So today, being open and receptive to receive is the first choice that we make. Repeat after me, I am open and receptive to receive answers to my prayers, meditations, and contemplations. I realize God knows my heart, God my creator, the one who thought the world would not be complete without me in it. And that's the truth. Everyone is equally important. We're all part of the whole let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer to receive the divine who joins our worship service today. The divine is the one who will meet our needs, answer our prayers, meditations, and contemplations. I invite the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit to join us today. I invite the true God of my reason for being to release all negativity from the week just past and throughout my life. To do so, I turn on my inner light of peace to activate my power, my intuitive wisdom, my creativity, my revitalization and restoration as a positive statement of my soul's eternal oneness with the heart, mind, and spirit of God. Repeat after me. For this, I give thanks. I let it be so, and so it is. Today's service is non-traditional and non-denominational. All religions are welcome to attend our service, as metaphysics is a perfect size for all religions, the perfect size for all non-religions, because metaphysics is a philosophy. And whether you're religious or not, you have a philosophy of life. We all do. As we have discussed, metaphysics is a range of philosophy and is taught in college but you don't have to have, go to college to have an, a belief system. We all have that in our families and wherever we grew up. Metaphysics is a branch of philosophy 
that explores the immutable laws of nature set by the Creator and apply equally to all in the universe, and that's a good thing. Metaphysics is the study of how our non-physical thoughts, feelings, and beliefs impact the physical aspects of our lives, impacts our health. If we changed our beliefs, could our prayers be answered? And you have heard, change your thoughts and beliefs, change your life. Open the door today to your heart's hopes and dreams. Connecting to the creator of all is a first step. And that's because this church recommends meditation, contemplation, 12 to 14 minutes twice a day. And that's for all souls, whether you're a baby soul, a mature soul, an old soul. It's because it's for all souls. It's for all religions, all non-religions, because we nurture ourselves. We take care of ourselves. We clean our thoughts, we sanctify our soul, we release problems up to the divine for resolution. Sometimes we don't have an answer. Sometimes we're just a cog in the great corporate world. And sometimes we're just a cog in our own private world. As we commune with the Creator, we activate the law of grace that activates, elevates us into a position to receive that which we prayed for. It is a step-by-step -step process. However, there's one thing that most people don't know. The prosperity of our soul cannot be overemphasized. I'll say that again. The prosperity of our soul cannot be overemphasized. And you wonder why you pray, meditate, and contemplate? You wonder why you go to church? Why you would read a Bible? Why you would read anything that would elevate you? It's because the prosperity of our soul cannot be overemphasized. Scripture says in 3 John chapter 2, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosperous. And that's how important it is that our light shines so brightly that it is our light that can illuminate the darkened areas of our heart. And we all know that our heart has so much in it that sometimes we forget what we have kept alive and what we can now let go of and release it so that we're healthier, that our soul is more prosperous. And no one else knows when you enter into your prayer closet in your prayer meditation and contemplation because afterwards, after you have released all of your problems up to the divine for answer, that we feel lighter, we feel brighter, we feel happier. And sometimes we don't realize how very important it is that what lives in our heart in those darkened areas must give good account of its reason for being in our hearts in the first place. Too often we have forgotten the reason that we have those darkened areas, we have unforgiveness in our heart. And we can release the old emotions that we might have forgotten about, that why we had them there in the first place. We can release those emotions into the primal light energy, where your energy is cleaned and recycled with new intentions, like your New Year's resolutions. And you, we become a more prosperous soul. And we feel lighter and brighter when we're no longer burdened by the emotions of the past. Release, repeat after me. I release all emotions that no longer serve my highest and best good. I intend for my soul to be as prosperous as possible. I want to be healthier. I want to be more prosperous. I want to be happier. I want to make good decisions. Let us pray all together the Lord's Prayer that gives to us the vast treasured trove that we seek 
that makes us stronger, makes us more skillful, is the highest expression of truth, the ultimate truth that's recorded in the Holy Bible by St. Matthew, Jesus' disciple, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Let us begin. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Repeat after me. I receive the Lord's Prayer. I receive the highest expression of truth that provides to me this week a vast treasure trove of blessings. And you know, it is Paul, Dr. Paulian Masters, founder of the International Metaphysical Ministry Systems, that recommends a technique for us to use that he had been very successful with. It's called a pause and ask technique. He says it will improve your life every day. He says that we must ask these questions before we pray, meditate, and contemplate. Because we know we are blessed and highly favored by our Creator. That's a given. He said to ask, what gift is God trying to give me right now? Is it a new job? Better health? Peace of mind? Is it enlightenment to resolve a nagging issue? He says, in truth, God wants to gift you all of the time. And that's the reason that you pray, meditate, and contemplate. That's the reason that it's so habit-forming. Because the closer to God's presence within you, the more likely you'll be made aware of what that gift is. I thought, isn't that a great thing to do? Because sometimes when you pray, meditate, and contemplate, you wonder, well, what am I doing this for? And he says, well, ask those questions. I like those questions, don't you? In a group that originated in England, calls this pause and ask technique that Dr. Masters recommends, Uncommon Sense, and it became the name of their group. Sometimes when we rejoice that we are in a position to help others, and we realize that our help is not wanted, will not be appreciated, or is vehemently opposed, we are only the messenger whose gift is refused. Sometimes the reason for refusal is fear of change, fear of the unknown, or something else. Fear is false evidence appearing real. The opposite of fear is faith. Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Repeat after me. I receive the gift of God. Verse number nine. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Repeat after me. I am saved through faith. I receive this gift of of God. We do know that by conforming to requirements of spiritual laws, in prayer, meditation, and contemplation, we know we have the power to ask what we will, and that like an obedient servant, that which we pray for, meditate, and contemplate on, will serve us in many useful capacities. And what is this obedient service called? This obedient servant is called the vital force. It is our life force that is the light within us. It is the life that lives within each of us. Absent this light of life within our physical body, we experience, as I've said before, a home going in which our physical body returns to Mother Earth from which it came, and our spirit returns 
to its origin back, in, back into the primal light of all creation. Although we do not know what the vital force looks like and possibly may never know, we do know that the light of life lives within us. It is our primary force. It is our life, often referred to in metaphysics as our God power because it manifests itself through our life force within our living bodies. It is the life within our body that makes it alive. We know that by complying with the laws and principles by which this primary force is governed, we can open ourselves to a more abundant inflow of this vital energy and thus express the highest possible degree of mental, moral, and spiritual efficiency. This church's mission is to provide a choice in which you can offset negative karma and the fear that accompanies it. How can this happen, you may ask? The answer is found in nearly all religions worldwide. Is it a simple solution? Yes. Because as we remember to bless ourselves and others, we're fulfilling the golden rule. And what is the golden rule? If you'll remember, it is worded similarly. And the meaning in the nearly 4,000 religions is the same. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And the reason is because energy knows its source and returns to its source. So you are the source of the energy. So what you're doing, thinking, and saying, acting, returns to its source. And you wonder why sometimes you have a good life and sometimes all of a sudden you don't. So metaphysically, we elevate the golden rule. It is think thoughts of others as you would have them think thoughts of you. Sometimes we have to change our thinking, and in doing so, we change our lives. Today we have a spiritual mind treatment offering called communion in which we can change our minds. Dear Father, Mother, God, Divine, Holy Presence of Jesus, the Christ, who heals us today. Into your welcoming presence of unconditional love, I acknowledge there is but one mind in the universe. And today I choose to be one with that divine mind. I release all negative karma and the fear that accompanies it into that divine mind that has guided me, protected me, prospered me all of these years, and today frees me even further from any and all attachment to any fear-filled non-value-added thoughts, words, actions, deeds. Let me embrace all the gifts that you have for me in the treasure trove of blessings the universe of all that is, was, or ever will be has in store for me. I release the struggle now as I look forward to your unparalleled bounty of renewed presence in my life. In greatest gratitude, I accept my life as I recommit it today. Not my will, but thine be done, is my choice. Repeat after me, for this I give thanks. I let it be so, and so it is. You know, in seeking the truth, we're seeking the ultimate cause of why things happen, how to manifest into our own lives, that human experience that we want to live. And sometimes if we ascertain the cause, and if we find that this cause is one, which is under our control, the effect or the experience will also be within our control. How happy do you want to be? How healthy do you want to be? How wealthy do you want to be? Would you even be allowed back in your family if you were very wealthy or very healthy or happy? They'd wonder, you know, what is going on with you? The question then is, what do you want to happen? Allow yourself to think how it can happen. 
We often think of how something can happen. However, if we release it to God, our Creator, to cause it to happen, something much better might happen. Because it's the God of all creation that you're talking to. Maybe the impossible will happen in a very good way. Always pray, not my will, but thine be done. Because you're releasing it to the all-knowing creator who saw that his creation was good and very good, spoken into existence just for you and just for me. If you don't know, you know what it, that it is you who holds the key and it's within you. This is all inner work. We have to allow our power, our intelligence, our love, and become the Lord of our own thoughts because we hold a key to every situation. And because we hold a key, we can transform and regenerate our power by which we may make ourselves what we will. And sometimes even better because when you release into the divine, the impossible becomes doable. If we succumb to the weak negative thoughts, become a slave, a victim of self-sabotage, we can lasso those thoughts, bring them into an under subjection that our wise master builder, who can think and see clearly walk confidently, not in, intim in intimidation or fear, because the divine knows truth. Repeat after me, I receive the truth that establishes the law within me. The clouds will always dissipate when you choose to set your thoughts on good things. That's why we pray, meditate, and contemplate. You will see the enemy coming from afar off. You will recognize the tactics and nip those negative thoughts in the bud. Don't worry, you will forever have opportunities to dwell on things that add no value to your life whatsoever. But constant self-awareness and experience will make you stronger and more skillful. Some of us have become very skillful, but sometimes we have to allow that there even, there's an even better solution to that that we even know about. We have to allow that to enter into our lives so today, if your others are struggling, can you now release this struggle with love and respect, surrounding it with God's Holy Spirit of love? Repeat after me, I release the struggle. I surround myself with God's Holy Spirit that protects me as I'm prospered. The truth is that there's enough of God's Holy Spirit to go around. The table is always set. The Holy Spirit can encircle the world with the primal light energy that God spoke into existence in the book of Genesis when he separated the light from the darkness and saw that the light was good and very good and created all that was, is, or ever will be. Now for our closing prayer affirmatives that we have each Sunday, wherever I may be, whatever I'm doing, whatever I possess, Whatever I give, whatever forgiveness that may be needed, whatever peace I may know, whatever love I may have, whatever success I may have, it is God's working through me. It is God's will, not mine, that is done. Not lift your hands to receive the benediction. Found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Repeat after me. I receive the benediction. I give thanks that good, satisfying results quickly appear. Now for our closing prayer. Divine Father, Mother God, divine presence of Jesus the Christ that blesses us with grace and truth. So that as we are blessed, we bless ourselves as well as others, with the good news that we surrender to a new paradigm where we are going with the flow, that grace and truth add so much more value to our lives, the value of lasting happiness. We're delighted you've chosen this church to be forever established 
in your perfect love and your perfect will. We bask always in your divine delight as you provide for us, protect us, prosper us, shower us with blessed, unlimited blessings of your divine favor. May we forever draw closer and nearer to you, enter into the prosperity of my soul. I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. Repeat after me. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and forever shall be a world without end. And now I say to you, blessings to you and yours, until we meet again. Blessings.